part of our ongoing program to promote board games from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Kia ora koutou, and welcome to Dreadful Meadows in about three minutes. Prototype copy used. It has a solo mode. It's a game for one to four players, playing time is short, and it's a pretty simple game. You are a confectioner in candy country, and the Great Harvest competition is on. Can you grow the best candy, take over the most land, and brew the most mouth-watering candy concoctions of all? The game ends when either the bag runs out of tiles, there are no more concoction cards, or only one harvester remains. Play one more round and go to scoring, with the winner being the player with the most points. Variable player powers. Each player has a unique power only they can use. Drafting. You will buy patches from the central display. Tile placement. Your farm is made up of candy generating patches. Player turn. Each player takes a character board and the matching three sugar sprites. Gain one concoction card of value 3, 6, and 9 and reshuffle the rest. Then gain a dreadful tree and one other patch of increasing value from the first to last player. Place your patches in front of you with one matching candy on each. Note that once placed, patches cannot be moved. On your turn you will take one of four actions. The first action is to draft candy patches. Each costs a value shown on itself plus the modifier from the market below. So these pumpkin pops cost 6 and the phantom mellows 3. Candy from your existing patches is spent to pay this cost, and if you overspend you get nothing back. Take your patches and slide the remaining patches right and refill the line with random draws from the bag. You can place your patches anywhere adjacent to your existing patches, but it is in your interest to make clusters of identical patches. The next action is to place a sugar sprite. They can go on any patch that currently does not have anything on it. Place one matching candy on each adjacent patch, which is only the ones touching the long side. Where you place changes what candy is grown, so here is a better option. Let's advance the game and show a full, four-sided sprite placement. If an adjacent patch already has candy, it doesn't gain a second, so do not place a second dreadful tree candy. The next action is to place harvesters. They can go on any patch that has all four sides surrounded, and the candy cost is the combined value of those surrounding patches. So here, that's 14. However, you cannot place a harvester on a dreadful tree. Now, when you place a sprite adjacent to the harvester, you not only harvest adjacent to the sprite, but also the harvester. The final action is to withdraw your sprites from the board. You can take back any number of them, and each one triggers a special ability based on the patch they were on. Finally, at any point in your turn, you can take candy from any patch and place it on a concoction card. Dreadful trees are wild cards. Completing a card scores it and flips it over. You will also score points from harvesters and patches of the same color connected to harvesters. Why would you like this game? Dreadful Meadows looks cute and dinky, but underneath the hood is a tight and fast paced engine building game, and one that plays a little differently than you first might think. Your instinct is to build the biggest farm and make tons of money, but the real points in the game are the concoction cards. Completing those are what will win you the game. The art direction and style is really cool, and each of the variable player powers dramatically changes how you approach the game as well. Luna's power, for example, makes removing sprites very powerful and you just can't help but love the candy components. Appearances aside though, this is a game that gamers will enjoy as well, as it has low luck and a tight decision space. The best thing about this game is it's not just a cutesy Halloween game, it's a game with actual depth. However, two minor bugbears of mine here. One, the harvesters are acrylic, a material I loathe, and being steampunky look a little out of place. And when playing with less than four players, you have to remove some tiles using these tiny, tiny dots as a reference. This is the second game from the designer of Galilean Moons. And for another game from the same publisher, try Shelfie Stacker. Dreadful Meadows. Tim Burton directs Candyland. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, like, share, and subscribe to the channel.